morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to worship. I'm so, so glad to see you all virtually in the comments section and to have you worshiping with us this morning. I have a few announcements before we begin our online service. The first is happy Father's Day to all of the dads and the granddads that are watching with us this morning. We are so thankful for you, for all that you do for us. A uh, special shout out to my dad, Bob. Um, I love you so much, dad, and I'm so thankful for you. And I hope that wherever you are, dads out there, whether you are eating pancakes with your family and you're watching service at the kitchen table or you're outside on your porch drinking a cup of coffee, maybe you're watching the service later because you went on a hike today or you're camping. I just hope that today and this weekend you felt very celebrated and appreciated because you are. I want to remind you that we have our ongoing adult study on Adam Hamilton's book, Unafraid, that is continuing this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This is a five-week series, the Unafraid study, and we are entering into week two, so it is not too late to join us, 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights um, in the Fellowship Hall. We have youth group every Thursday night in the summer at 7.30 p.m., um, eighth through 12th graders are welcome, and it is at Mazevo Coffee on Grant Avenue. If any Billings Methodist teenager would like to join us and bring friends, know you are always, always welcome. We have amazing service for you. Um, first thing to note, we are doing communion today. And so if you would take a minute to get those elements ready, um, again, you just need a solid and a liquid. So if you've got a crackers and bread or juice, great. If not, coffee works, muffin works. Um, communion will be later on in the service. Pastor Sarah Clark of Grace United Methodist Church is providing the sermon today, and it is a powerful sermon that we all need to hear. Thanks to Pastor Sarah for her ministry and her gift of preaching to us today. We have several phenomenal musicians who are going to bless us tremendously in this online service. I cannot wait to hear all of the music again. Um, and a big, big thanks to Judy Frank at Shiloh UMC for being our pianist today. Um, a big thanks to Steve Adland, who is the development director of Special K Ranch. This is a Christian ministry in Billings, Montana that supports adults with developmental disabilities. Um, Steve is not a professional musician, but I think he should be a professional musician. He's amazing. Um, we also have Justin Bullis, who is a pastor at Belong UMC in Denver, and most importantly, one of my dear, dear friends. Um, pastor Justin is going to be singing and playing a song with um, Taylor and Farah from his church, Belong. This song was written by John Mark Pantana, and it is going to be our going forth benediction song. It's my favorite song right now. And I just can't wait for you all to enjoy it with me. Thank you, Justin, for sharing your gift of music with us um, all the way up in Billings, Montana. We are grateful for you. Um, we have summer all set up, all finalized. And so our worship schedule is out. You can find our summer worship schedule on hopeumcbillings.org, our webpage. You can just click up on the top where it says um, summer worship schedule. You should have also received a PDF, which is the official calendar. A big thanks to Terry Norman for making that this week. Um, if you would like to receive the PDF calendar and you haven't done so already, please just go ahead and email me at angiedornish at gmail.com. Or again, you can access that calendar on the hopeumcbillings.org website. We have a fantastic service for you today. Um, I am so excited for you uh, and I am so, so, so thankful for all of you. Remember to um, reach out if you have any prayer requests, anything that you need throughout the week. Know that I am here for you and we are all in this together as the family of God at Hope UMC. Enjoy the service today.
Good morning and welcome to worship. Would you please join me for an opening prayer? Oh, great God of the universe and Lord of our lives, thank you that your ways and your thoughts and your plans are so much bigger than what we can see or understand or know in this moment. We gather today as your people to wholeheartedly remember and offer our trust and our praise and our hope that is found in you. Send your spirit to be in our words, in our songs, in our prayers. Send your spirit to open our hearts and our ears and our minds so that we might find and know that message that you have for each of us today so that we can go out in faith living as people who are a part of this wonderful plan and painting that you have already created. Oh God, we love you. Bless our worship. Amen. this time in our service, we are invited to give God back a portion of what God has generously given to us. God says in scripture that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And there are two ways that you can partner with the ministry of Hope United Methodist Church. The first is to mail checks into Hope UMC at P.O. Box 50066. And the second is to give online at hopeumcbillings.org and simply click on the donation link. Thank you 
and may God richly bless both the gift and the giver. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The boy grew up and stopped nursing. On the day he stopped nursing, Abraham prepared a huge banquet. Sarah saw Hagar's son laughing, the one Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham. So she said to Abraham, Send this servant away with her son. The servant's son won't share the inheritance with my son Isaac. This upset Abraham terribly because the boy was his son. God said to Abraham, Don't be upset about the boy and your servant. Do everything Sarah tells you to do because your descendants will be traced through Isaac. But I will make of your servant son a great nation too, because he is also your descendant. Abraham got up early in the morning, took some bread and a flask of water and gave it to Hagar, put the boy in her shoulder sling and sent her away. She left and wandered through the desert near Beersheba. Finally, the water in the flask ran out and she put the boy down under one of the desert shrubs. She walked away from him about as far as a bow shot and sat down telling herself, I can't bear to see the boy die. She sat at a distance, cried out in grief, and wept. God heard the boy's cries, and God's messenger called Hagar to Hagar from heaven and said to her, Hagar, what's wrong? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy's cries over there. Get up, pick up the boy, and take him by the hand. I will make of him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well. She went over, filled the water flask, and gave the boy a drink. God remained with the boy. He grew up, lived in the desert, and became an expert archer. He lived in the Paran Desert, and his mother found him an Egyptian wife. This week, I watched a Netflix comedy stand-up special where the comedian began her show by telling the audience what her whole plan for the show was. She told them what jokes to expect. She told them about the theme. She even told them to look out for a particular joke that she was really proud of. She clued them in on the big reveal at the center of her show, and it was all very funny. And true to her word, all of the themes and the jokes and the big reveals were in there. The book of Genesis is where the story begins in our scriptures. And if you look closely, there's so much revealed in that book about how the story will unfold. So many of the themes and promises of God's relationship with us and to us are right there in those first stories. And Genesis is naturally a book of firsts. Sarah is the first matriarch. She is the first in a long line of wanderers and wonderers and faithful and doubtful people of God. Hagar is the first person in the Bible, not the first woman, the first person to be visited by a divine messenger of God. She's the only person in the Bible who ever names God, gives God a name. She's the first person to receive the promise of descendants. She is the mother of the first of Abraham's children. Their story, Sarah and Hagar's, is the first of many stories like it, stories that continue even today. Here's what happened. Abraham... Sarah's husband, was given a promise by God that he would have descendants that outnumbered the stars in the sky. The problem was Sarah was old and they had no children. Sarah was unsure and worried about how this thing could happen. So she told Hagar, who was her servant, 
to sleep with Abraham so that Hagar could become pregnant and give Abraham the descendants that God had promised him. It's important to note that this was Sarah's idea, not Hagar's choice. So all of this goes down according to Sarah's plan, but when Hagar becomes pregnant, Sarah begins to mistreat her. It gets so bad that Hagar runs away. So Hagar, alone and pregnant and in the desert, is sitting by a spring of water when a divine messenger comes to her and tells her to go back to Sarah because God intends to make her son, Hagar's son, the father of a great people. Then Hagar names God Elroy, which means God sees me. So Hagar returns and gives birth to a son who's named Ishmael, which is the name the divine messenger gives to Hagar for her son while she's in the desert. And after Hagar's return, visitors announce Sarah's impending pregnancy, which pretty much leads us to the scripture for today. So Sarah has given birth to Isaac, and he's beginning to grow. And one day, Sarah notices Ishmael doing something with Isaac. There's been much debate over what that something is. Perhaps he's playing with him. Perhaps he's teasing him. Perhaps he's imitating him. Whatever it was, it enrages Sarah to the point that she demands that Hagar and Ishmael be sent out into the wilderness. That boy will not inherit along with my son, is what she says. See, Ishmael was the firstborn son, and as the firstborn son, he was entitled to a double portion of the inheritance. He would be the one with pride of place among all of the sons of Abraham. Of all these descendants that God had promised, Ishmael would be the first. As Sarah saw it, if Ishmael was around, there was no place for Isaac. It was one or the other, my son or your son, me or you. It's one of the recurring themes we humans just can't seem to figure out how to let go of. The idea that life is a zero-sum game. In order for me to have something, you cannot have that thing. Whatever you have is something that has been taken away from me. That was the world as Sarah saw it. And operating in that world, it makes sense that she did what she did. She was protecting her son, providing him with what he needed. If the only choice is I win, you lose, or you win, I lose, then of course she would do what she did. What she didn't know, what she couldn't see, what she couldn't imagine, was that God had something else in mind. God had in mind a future for both of the sons. From the beginning of the story, if you're paying close attention, you will notice that God made promises to both of them, promises that they would both have sons who would be the firstborn of great nations. And they did. This, too, is one of the recurring themes in the unfolding story of God and us. Probably it is the theme, the main theme, the big reveal. From the very beginning of the story, God created a we world. Not a we world, a we world. A world where blessing, goodness, grace is meant for all, not just for some. That's the kingdom that God envisions and Jesus proclaims. The kingdom that God asks us to co-create and co-build. But it only works when it works for all of us. Because there is no such thing as I win, we lose. If we lose, then I lose too. I want to live in a community 
where everyone can be healthy and whole. But as long as some people can't afford to go to the doctor or have access to medications they need, we cannot be the community we hope for. We want to live in a world where people aren't afraid, where violence doesn't happen. But as long as abuse happens in secret or violence to others is excused or pushed under the rug, we do not live in that world. We hold dear the idea that all lives are valued and valuable, but until Black lives matter, both as words that we say and through the actions we take, it is not true that all lives matter. This moment we're living in now, this is a crucial moment in our lives together and in our story as people of God. Too long, we've been living with an inheritance that depended on others being cast out into the wilderness. Too long, we've been subscribe, subscribing to this I win, we lose mentality that God has rejected over and over and over and over. And I know that this, this was not completely a mess of our own making. Sarah would say it was not a mess of her own making either. She didn't set up the system that she was living in, the system where wealth is measured by sons and some get everything and some are sent to the wilderness. That's not a good enough answer. It wasn't for Sarah, and it isn't for us. Not when God has something else in mind for us. Not when we're given the chance to make a different decision, to choose a different path, to dream a different dream, to do better. We've been talking a lot these days about listening and learning. And that is so important right now, to listen to the voices that have been too long in the wilderness, to learn about how it got to be that way. But here and now, we can also start the work of acting out of a different mentality, of making different choices, of imagining different things, of trying to build with God a different future, and not only a different future, a different present. As you do, as we do, I want to offer the, you these words from a Black woman who is a poet and artist, Morgan Harper Nichols. Engage in the long, faithful work. Surrender the need of striving to be the best or always right, and focus instead on leaning into light that reveals all things all that is good, and all that stands to be corrected and redirected. And as you lean into light, be gentle with the word darkness. For more than it merely means wrong or bad, it is also the color of a full starless night sky and actual bodies of human beings who have been overlooked too many times. Many, many words hold more than one meaning. Language on light and dark may have its place, and this is also true. This very language has been used to say, you are a threat, I am not, I am worth more than you. It takes kindness to understand this. For even though kindness is a beautiful word, it does not mean that nothing gets disrupted. Sometimes a way of thinking must be interrupted in order for kindness to truly thrive. For as sure as kindness leans into what is good, it also speaks about what isn't right. It is compassionate and gentle when long histories are pulled from morning into morning. Engage in the long, faithful work of awakening with your heart and mind open to the possibility that things are more complex than they once seemed. And as hard as it is to hold all of this, you are still free to dream. You do not have to be who you used to be. You do not have to think the way that you used to think. You are free to take hopeful, thoughtful action in pursuit of better things. 
So here's to new beginnings, knowing it is impossible to ignore that long history, opening up to the mystery that grace still finds you here. And grace is unmerited favor, but it might not always look the way you want it to. It will invite you out in the open, and it will also reveal what has been broken. You might have to unlearn the way you thought things would be. You might find that being undone is the best way to move on, humbly, mindfully, wholly. For how liberating it is to pursue wholeness over perfection, finding that grace is more than a beautiful word, but a daily act of being undone and awakening a direction. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is the day in which we get to celebrate all the important men in our lives, dads and grandpas and uncles and teachers and mentors and pastors and coaches and neighbors, all the men in our lives who have made an impact on us. And so we want to say Happy Father's Day to you. And as a special way to celebrate you, we bring to you this uh, photo collage that was put together by Pastor Angie. Happy Father's Day, please enjoy. At this time in the service, we get to lift each other up in prayer. I have several prayer requests and praises for the Family of Hope United Methodist Church. The first is for Barb Polaroy. Barb's son Frank had a stent put in his heart this week, and as he heals from the stent, the doctors are planning to put in an aortic valve as well. 
prayers of healing and of peace on Frank and his mother, Barb. We pray for Beth Emmerd's sister-in-law, Jane, whose brother died recently in a work accident. We ask for God's comfort for the family who grieves this sudden death. We pray for Kathy and Bill Bauman's daughter, Mariah, who is continuing to undergo medical assessment. We pray for wisdom and discernment from the doctors and nurses, and we are thankful for the progress that has been made in her journey. We pray for Karen Casterline, who has surgery tomorrow, surgery she has been waiting for, and we are with you, Karen. We love you, and we are lifting you up in prayer for your surgery tomorrow, June 22nd. We ask for a quick and successful recovery. In Jesus' name, ongoing prayers for Everett Schrader, for Cindy, and for their entire family as Everett continues to battle with health issues. We pray for the Schrader family for renewal and restoration during this time. We have many birthdays that are coming up. We've got Rudy's birthday, Rudy Mockle, and we've got Brad Finnick's birthday. Brad, his birthday is today on Father's Day, which is pretty special because Brad has two amazing kiddos, Kian and Lauren. So a happy birthday to you, Brad and we hope that you are having a wonderful day and a wonderful Father's Day. We lift up prayers for Pat Nixon, whose sister-in-law recently had a hysterectomy and is starting radiation and chemo treatments. We pray for Pat's sister-in-law for all of the procedures and her journey with cancer treatment that she is about to begin. We lift up Bill Bauman's CASA teen and for all of the teenagers that Bill has been able to serve and advocate for as a CASA. We pray for this young man who is currently on the run, that this young man would know the love of God, would know his worth, and would know that Bill loves him so much. We pray for the Emmerd son-in-law, Ken, who is recently um, feeling having difficulties health-wise um, from a physical altercation that he went through at the Boys and Girls Ranch. We pray for Ken and for all involved. We thank you for the work that Ken and all of the staff do at the Boys and Girls Ranch here in Yellowstone County. And we pray for all the young men and women who are receiving restoration, recovery, and healing. We pray a praise of thanks Thanksgiving and joy for Carol Matthews' daughter, Amy, who finished her last cancer treatment a few days ago. We are so thankful that her journey with chemo and radiation and all of the treatments that she has undergone are over. We pray for continued healing, for continued remission in Jesus' name, and we rejoice with the family as they celebrate this big win. We are so grateful for all of the prayer requests and praises that are continually lifted up. And if you would like to be a part of the prayer chain, please email me, Angie Dornish at gmail.com, and we will get you in touch with our prayer chain so you can know all of the wonderful things that are going on in the Hope United Methodist Church family. Will you please pray with me at this time? Gracious and loving God, Thank you for the time to come together this Sunday morning in worship. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would do a work amongst us, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, that you would be with each of us and give us what we need this coming week. For all of those who are recovering from health, we ask that you, great physician, would give them peace, comfort, and complete restoration. We ask, Lord, for those who are about to go into major procedures, treatments, surgeries, that you would give them peace, that you would give them guidance, and that you would be with those who are in the operating room. Lord Jesus, we ask for those who are grieving to know that they are not alone, that you would send their spirit, your spirit, to be amongst them mightily and to do a work in their hearts as they mourn the loss of loved ones. And finally, we thank you for the birthday celebrations, 
for Brad, for Rudy, for those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries, those who are going on road trips with family members to see loved ones. We pray for traveling mercies for our students and our teenagers like Rachel Hershey, who are playing softball this summer. Lord, we lift up all of the wonderful things that are happening in the midst of our church family. We ask that you would continue to guide us as a family of God, as we go out into the community throughout the week to be your hands and feet, Jesus. We pray all of this in your precious name. Amen. And now we have a special treat where we are going to hear the Lord's Prayer sung this morning. May our hearts be renewed by the sacred music. Amen. And now comes the time in our service where we get to come to the table for the Lord's Supper. You know, one of my favorite things about being Methodist is that all people are welcome to the table of Christ. You don't have to be Methodist. You don't have to believe a certain thing or vow a certain thing. There are not all of these loopholes and hoops to jump through. We are all welcome as children of God. 
And so as Pastor Sarah said this morning in her sermon, we get to enter in to the Lord's Supper this, this morning together as a part of the big grand narrative that God is painting for us. We are part of a story that is a part of an even bigger story. And so this morning, I would ask as you get your communion elements ready to prepare your hearts for partaking in the cup of hope and the bread of life. On the night that our Savior Jesus was to give himself up for love, he took bread with his disciples, gave thanks to God, broke it, and said, This is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat, do so in remembrance of me. And after the supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks to God, and said to the disciples, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins and the restoration of the world. Every time you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And now I would ask that you pray with me this morning as we bless our elements for communion. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on this common bread and vine. Make them be for us the cup of hope and the bread of new life. And may these elements nourish and sustain us with your grace, Lord that we might be transformed to go out in the world and bring your love. In Jesus' name, amen. A big thanks to everyone who participated in making today's service possible. And a big thanks to Sarah. Pastor Sarah, your prophetic sermon was inspiring and challenging, and I am so grateful for your ministry. I would ask that we would go out from this worship service, working to build a different present and a different future. So who are the voices who have been banished to the wilderness? Who are those individuals like Ishmael and Hagar, who have been rejected, who have been banished and forgotten? How can we work to bring them into the fold? For just as Sarah reminded us, we are not truly free unless all of us are free. We are not truly well unless all of us are well. And now hear these words again from Morgan Harper Nichols. May we, church family, engage in the long faithful work, surrendering that need to always be the best or always be right. And instead, may we focus on leaning into the light that reveals all things, all that is good and all that stands to be corrected and redirected. May we go and do this as the body of Christ. Amen. And now I want to introduce my dear friend, Pastor Justin Bullis of Belong United Methodist Church, who is going to be singing for us, Taste and See That the Lord is Good. Sweeter than the honeycomb, richer than the wine, better than the finest things that we can taste this life. You are my desires, King. Your love is all I ever need. You are my delicacy. Come on, come on to dinner table. Come on, come on to the dinner table. You're healing my heart when I'm drinking in you Like jumping in the water in the summer of June Soothing my 
He's good to me. 